you guys so I wanted to do a quick uh, Google Groups tutorial because Lori and Liz and I were talking about it and how it can be very useful especially in the high school for an asynchronous kind of discussion forum and that is actually very much what it is it is a forum um, we use it for our mailing groups our mass mailing groups so like um, SL staff and such but it also has another side to it that we don't see as much but is very nifty for situations like we are currently in. So I'm gonna start by going to Google Groups once I find it right there, oh thank God. So I'm gonna click that and it's just groups.google.com. And this is more or less what it will look like when you first get in there. Um, off the top of my head, I believe you guys will have the majority of these, um, especially if you are in that mailing group. So like if you are a grade school teacher, this one should show up for you. However, if you're a high school teacher, probably will not. So the one that I'm going to use for this example is one that I made for my library, Miss Kay's Corner. So this right here is where my conversations are. So I've gone ahead and made a topic, which uh, Lori, I'm gonna use you as an example because you're the one that kind of got my brain going on this. Um, so you could have a conversation, here's the, the subject of it, per book. So you could ultimately have right here and then the discussion down below it. So like this was my original post on it and then I was able to come in as the SL guest and respond. And guess what? Now I can reply as me. So I'd go reply all and I would go, wow, cute chicken. And then post. Now, this will do two things. The first, it'll post it down below it. But because this also acts like an email group, it has also sent an email to anybody who is in the group. So in this regard, Lori, for like per book, you might wanna create a Google group per book. That way someone who is reading um, Gulliver's Travels isn't getting all of the notifications for someone who's reading To Kill a Mockingbird, if you get what I mean there. So now what I will do is I'm going to switch over to my guest view and here's what it is. It's, I need to refresh it because there's a new post and there it is. But I want to show you what it looks like um, on the email side of things too. Because it will have sent me an email right there. You have been added. No, 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 no. It's in my forums. So right here is my new post and it shows me the entire like it shows me the new comment. It shows me the stream of the conversation that I am currently in. Um, so that is very nifty. That's kind of more the student side of it. But we should probably look at how to set one up. So we are going to come back to my groups. And we are going to click create a group. So we're going to use this one as tutorials. Uh, you will probably want to leave it at sprague.wednet.edu. Next. Now this is where your privacy settings come in. Who can join the group? Only invited guests. Anyone in the organization can ask, which means you would have to approve them, or anyone in the organization can search it, find it, and join it. So for this instance, I would probably do only invited users, for most instances, who can view conversations, entire organization, maybe just the group members who can post, maybe just the group members, who can view the members. This one, I'm a little picky on for um, class discussions. You could probably just leave it at group members. I generally leave it at group managers. Those are myself and anybody I kind of add as a quote, quote, co-teacher. So next, then we can add, add the actual members here. So we could do um, guests, we can do um, me, and we'll leave it at that for right now. I don't want to bombard a whole bunch of people with fake invitations. Group managers, this is where I would add my co-teacher. And this is kind of, they have more leeway, and I can dictate that later, but they do not have as much power as I do, and they have certain settings that are still restricted to them. Um, your welcome message, so let's say you're adding students to this for a group, you could have um, welcome to the book talk for Lord of the Flies, 
feel free to create topics based on your points or per week or however you want it arranged um, for discussion for lit circles. Uh, whatever you want to put there. And then your subscription. Now, all email is kind of what I had set up for that library one. Anytime there is a new message, it will email them immediately. Digest um, kind of does a, if I recall correctly, it does kind of a summary at certain points, abridged, kind of very short snippets, and none as in they will not receive emails at all, which um, I could see having its uses, but for this purpose, I would probably leave it at all email, but that's just me. Okay, directly add members. So what that means is these people won't have the option to say, yeah, sure, I'll join. They're just there. Um, so once you have that set up, you'll click create group and it will now be listed in this list. Okay, one member has been added successfully. The other one is um, my is me because it is outside of our organization. So I'm going to click continue and ignore it. Go to group. So here is my brand new group. Obviously, to start a conversation, I can click right here and click start conversation. Or I can click new conversation right here. And it's very email-esque. So I would sit there and I would go welcome and then i would have whatever message i want here please interact with this message post and it will now pop up here there we go now we will hop back over to guest so that i can see this my groups now there's ta -da, tutorials i click it and as the student now i see this okay Please interact with this message. Hello. Post message. There it is. So this is really a nice tool. I almost said nifty for the billionth time. This is a really nice tool to create that asynchronous conversation that some of your classes might require. If you have any questions or further setting quandaries, uh, please let me know and I will pretend to answer Google Groups while I love it. I am not as versed in as some of our other Google applications, but I will try my darndest. So have fun and happy learning.